Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door details emerge, Octopath Traveler is back, level 5 is gone, and we got some super sweet sales on games I think you need to play. So good morning Mario, and good morning Switch fans, hope you're all doing fantastic out there. The Detroit Lions are revealing their new jerseys today. They leaked. I've already seen them. I think they're really good. I was really hoping for a black and blue jersey, and we got a black and blue jersey along with some nice nifty tweaks to their normal uniforms. So for anybody that cares about the Lions, there you go. Now, if you care about Nintendo, which I bet you do, what's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Let me know your take on today's topics in the comments down below, like Octopath Traveler returning to the eShop. It was removed from the eShop and we didn't know why, but it's finally back after a while. And it seems pretty clear that the reason it disappeared off the eShop was because it was transitioning publishers from Nintendo to Square Enix. A bit of an odd like late game shift, but sometimes deals work out like that. Sometimes IP gets moved around and it seems like they needed to remove it and re-put it back on. So like it couldn't be part of the Nintendo game vouchers anymore because it's not a Nintendo published game. Either way, if you wanna play Octopath Traveler, you can get it. You can also get Bellatro if you're over in Europe. They had to reclassify that game because of its excessive gambling. Even though it's not really gambling, I understand why like some ratings boards are more sensitive than others to that, but Bellatro is still a phenomenal game. It's about making a poker hand and then making it crazy. That's basically all you need to know. It's very, very addictive though. It will take a ton of your time, but I do think it's worth it. Now, one game I'm hoping will take up all my time in May, and I cannot wait to play with all of you, is P-P-T-T-Y-D. No, P-M. P-M-T-T-Y-D. Paper Mario, I was like, P-P? Paper, Paper Peach? Paper Peach. Paper Peach, I do like her. She is in the game. But Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door dropped a new Yoshi trailer showing off the partner Yoshi who can be on your team. He's got such a good effort. He's like the little engine that could, but the little dino that could, trying his hardest to lift Heavy Mario up to fight against Big Piranhas and to be the best that he can be. But we've also learned from Tom Henderson that there is going to be some Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door previews dropping next week ahead of the game's embargo opening up before launch. Now, Tom Henderson says the previews will be dropping on April 25th, which is a week from today, next Thursday. That means that reviewers have got this game well in advance. It is a big game, so it does make a lot of sense, and I am very sad because I wish I had it well in advance, but I do not. Nonetheless, the review embargo drops May 21st, which is a few days before launch, kind of par for the course for Nintendo. It doesn't indicate anything bad about the game. They never give huge heads up for reviews. This game is going to review incredibly well. I think it's going to get straight nines across the board. It is maybe the best Paper Mario game and maybe even the best RPG-centric Mario game. Couple that with the new graphical tweaks, the upgrades they've made, and anything that we find out next week, because that's when we're going to find out. Like, next Thursday is when we'll know, did they add new content? Did they bring more to the table? I'm sure, in, as part of their previews, Nintendo did inform reviewers and journalists, like, hey, this is what's additional in this game and why it is a new fully priced package. I think it's the best game coming to Nintendo Switch this year, at least based on what we know. So I'm very excited for this one. It continues to look amazing, and I'm looking forward to next Thursday to finally get details on what makes this one a little bit different besides the obvious visual overhaul. Now, Level 5 has been a big partner and a big supporter of Nintendo for a long time, and they've been one of their better handheld developers for as long as I can remember but we haven't really got a lot materialized on Nintendo Switch. And some of the exciting games are still way off in the distance. Things like Professor Layton and the New World of Steam looked incredible at its reveal, but we haven't really heard much since. Deca Police has been coming for a long time and continues to get pushed back. And then we have seen a little more of Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time, but it's not out. Now, Level 5 was supposed to have a showcase this month, April 2024, but with no peep from the studio, it seemed like it was going to be delayed. And now we have full confirmation from Level 5 themselves saying, we regret to inform you that Level 5 Vision 2024, To the World's Children, crazy name, uh, scheduled for April will be postponed to summer 2024. That being said, we have decided to hold an additional event for Inazuma 11 Victory Road in conjunction with the main event. We sincerely apologize to all the users who have been looking forward to this event. We kindly ask for your understanding and continued support. I don't know when these games are going to come out, but it seems like at this point, they might just get pushed to Switch 2. Perhaps Deca Police was kind of in the boundary zone of like a Switch 1, a Switch 2, and maybe it's going to get pushed. Perhaps though it will come out later this fall. It's been anticipated for a while, and like I said, has been pushed before. Professor Layton is definitely going to be a Switch 2 title, which is fine. Like level 5, 
they should be allowed to capitalize on a new console and I hope it does well. I'm very excited to see that franchise return. It's just a bit odd that, I don't know, Level 5 didn't seem to have much of a presence on Switch and I'm surprised given that they were such a prominent developer for, you know, the past consoles, the DS, the 3DS, and I think they could have succeeded in a lot of these slower times if they had games ready to go. But alas, they did not really have games ready to go. To be fair, they did port over Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch and Nino Kuni Revenant Kingdom to the Switch, and they brought Snack World, the Dungeon Crawl Gold. Um, but they really haven't been that prevalent, especially in the West, compared to how many titles they've released on the 3DS and on the DS. Like they, they really were a prominent developer. Um, oh, I think they also put out uh, Layton's Mystery Journey, Catch Rail, and the Millionaire's Conspiracy Deluxe Edition, but that was just like a mobile game ported over. They haven't really done much original, but I'm excited to see what Level 5 has to share, and at least the summer will have more for us to see, so I'll keep you posted on when that event date drops. As of right now, though, Professor Layton is still solving puzzles, and uh, we won't see him till I'm sure, at least 2025. I'm going small for our next segment because we have a really sweet indie sale that just started after the Nintendo Direct. I knew there was a European indie sale, but I didn't realize or really see any fanfare about a North American indie sale. Nonetheless, it runs till April 23rd, end of the night, and it's got like many of the very best indies, so it's not something you should miss. If you were ever interested in Sea of Stars, fantastic RPG with action elements, Maybe honestly a great prep course for Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. That one's 20% off. Hades is 50% off. You heard about the technical test being announced and revealed for Hades 2. Eventually I expect that to be on probably Switch 2, but for now, Hades is okay on Switch. I think it looks and runs better on like a Steam Deck, but if you don't have another option, still a great game and you can always play it on your TV. Trombone Champ is a goofy affair for 45% off. We got the classic Stardew Valley, Vampire Survivors, and Hollow Knight. All of them worth playing. All of them seeing decent discounts. Among Us, Slay the Spire, the Cuphead Delicious Last Course Pack, that's going to give you uh, both of it, which is nice for 20 bucks. Fantastic game, very challenging, love it. I wanna center in on Tunic. I don't think Tunic ever got enough love. It's like a very good homage to Zelda with so many nice secrets, and it really tasks the player with figuring out where to go, what to do next, but then rewards you with epic encounters, great boss battles, and beautiful art. Love that one. Cult of the Lamb is down 40% off. Cocoon, 30% off. You gotta play Cocoon. If I'm gonna wrap one title on this list, it's Cocoon. I think that was the best indie of last year by far. I love that game. It's like a rare 10 out of 10 for me. I think it's phenomenal and it's amazing on Switch and it's definitely like an S plus tier game. If you haven't played it or seen it, you can check out my review or just go buy it. Like you won't regret it. It's amazingly innovative, creative and crafty and takes your brain through a total loop. Both Ori games are at good prices. Outer Wilds is similarly 30% off for the Archaeologist Edition, which includes all the DLC. Unpacking the Katana Zero, low prices. Katana Zero, you know, is one of my favorites. Eastworld with the bundled uh, Octopia DLC, another great price, 35% off. This is honestly a phenomenal sale. Like, it's hard for me to say that any of these games would not be a good pickup. I love them all, and the list continues with Chicory, Disco Elysium, and What the Golf, all around $10. Disco Elysium is a ton of content. For 12 bucks, like that's a humongous, humongous value for the final cut version of this great uh, narrative-driven RPG. Neon White is an amazing game at $15. Love that one. Me and Gabe reviewed it upon its release and it's amazing. Bug Fables is another good Paper Mario kind of clone that really holds up on its own and represents the bug lovers out there. Cavern of Dreams is something that I've touted for a bit now. It harkens back to the N64 era of collect-a-thon type titles and I really liked it. It's short, it's bite-sized, so at $10, like, it feels like a good price and you're gonna be able to beat it in a few hours, which honestly, for a collect-a-thon, it's kinda nice, like, give you the flavor of what it was without requiring the same investment. Signalis, River City Girls 2, and Moon all delivering solid games although river city girls 2 being 28 dollars feels feels like a lot i know that they like to charge 40 for these titles and, and they are flushed out games but i don't know especially on sale i'd like to see this at least in the 20 dollar range one shot world machine edition i don't know what that is but bug snacks at 749 70 percent off very good this began as a ps5 exclusive and then moved over to switch it's got a little bit of viva pinata and a little bit of its own thing as you categorize collect and uh, just solve the mystery of the buggy world where french fries become arms, or arms become french fries, rather. Minico's Night Market for 16, Wargroove Bundle for 21.59, dollars 
Have a Nice Death, 1666, of course, going with the spooky number there. Gang Beast, and then we end with Rogue Legacy 2, Dicey Dungeons, and Panzer Paladin. Dicey Dungeons is a phenomenal roguelite. I've really talked about this game a lot before. It's been, I think, maybe a little bit lower, but $5 is like a perfect price. That is a fiver that you can spend and know you're going to get a great weekend and beyond. So many ways to replay this game and improve your skills and move through the cool, colorfully crafted worlds. I love the twists on sort of like card battling, but with dice, very fun. And then Rogue Legacy 2 is awesome, 15 bucks, down from 25, 40% off. Both Rogue Legacy 1 and 2 are great. Rogue Legacy 2, um, I think it's better. I feel like it controls better and I feel like it has more going for it. So I probably would recommend that one. Obviously the, the catch there is that you keep having uh, descendants that have different issues and problems and quirks, which makes it really fun. But this is a phenomenal indie sale, and I would highly recommend you check it out if you got some eShop credit or are looking for something to buy. Like, all these are great. My top three picks are definitely Cocoon, um, Katana Zero, and Tunic. Those are my top three that I love the most. But let me know what you're going to pick up, any that you highly, heavily recommend for others out there. And until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Love you lots. Switch Force out.